Imagine that you were on your deathbed. You'd been suffering from a terminal illness, and your doctor told you that you had only a few weeks left to live. This whole time, you'd been in intense pain. What would you do? Would you maybe want to go out in life on your own terms, be able to die at your chosen time and place, in your own bed at your house, surrounded by your family so you could say your last goodbyes? Many people face this, and by legalizing physician-assisted suicide, we could give these people the opportunity to have some control in their life again. Many of these people are suffering, and keep in mind that this could be you, this could be your parents, your grandparents, this could be anyone, and it's a policy we must face. Physician-assisted suicide is when a patient, who are mostly elderly but can be of any age, are suffering from a terminal illness and ask their physician for a lethal dose of medication that they could orally take to end their life. It's been legalized in a few countries around the world, including the Netherlands, where studies have been done, and also in three states in the United States, including Oregon, Montana, and Washington. It's been legalized most notably in Oregon in 1994 with the Death with Dignity Act, of which 400 people have taken advantage of this so far. It gives those with six months left, with six months left to live, less than six months left to live, the opportunity to ask their physician for this medication, and it is distinctly different than euthanasia, which is when a doctor himself or herself administers that drug. As I've said, as I will discuss later, there are strict guidelines involved in this. And so far in this country, the Supreme Court has effectively ruled that they will stay out of the matter and will instead let states decide for themselves what course to take. Therefore, I will discuss four reasons why every single state in the United States of America should legalize physician-assisted suicide. The first reason is because many of, the, many of these patients are undergoing intense pain, and they really have no control over their lives in the last final stages. And even the New England Journal of Medicine has found, when reviewing these patients in the Death with Dignity Act in Oregon, that many of them would do this for more reasons than just the intense pain they go through every day. And these include a loss of body control, loss of bowel movements, loss of autonomy, and an overall loss of control of almost every aspect of life. For these people, life is not really life. It's simply having a pulse, and they realize that. And along with this, that part of comfort of knowing that you have that control is also especially important. As the Journal of Medical Ethics has found that many of the people who request this drug and receive it later don't even take it. They just like having the comfort that they know they have some control over their life. Along with this, the British Medical Journal has found in a study of physician-assisted suicide in the Netherlands that in a study of the families of the patients, a lot of the families have dealt better with different grief and stress symptoms when there was this planned death. And here I bring up a personal story of a man named Dudley Clendine, who suffers from ALS and is a writer for the New York Times. He says that he's been sick and he may die soon, but it, as long as he's able to do what he loves, as long as he's able to write, walk his dog, and kiss his wife, he'll know that life's worth living. But once he can't do those things anymore, then maybe it's just time for him to peacefully leave, leave this earth. He bravely faces death as he faces life. And this is so important. And imagine that this could be you. This could be happening to you. And you could have accepted death with peace, but you wouldn't be allowed to. My second reason why physician-assisted suicide should be legalized is because it helps out families and patients economically, and not only that, but it could have huge societal benefits. The Hemlock Society, which is a pro-physician-assisted suicide foundation, has found that of all the benefits they have found for physician-assisted suicide, that the pure economic benefits is the one thing that will drive it to be legalized. And along with this, health budgets around the world are already strained. Dr. Brian Keeley, who's a chairman at the British Medical Association of Scotland, has said that they are spending tens of thousands of drugs to extend patients' lives for only a short amount of time. In the end, society must make a decision, because this money could go to funding other research. Even a spokesperson for the Rare Cancer Society has said that there may be a case for not funding cancer drugs that only extend patients' lives for a relatively short amount of time. Along with this, I bring back up the story of Dudley Clendine, who suffers from ALS. He said that the surgery and the people that would help him to live again for a couple months would cost up to half a million dollars. And he doesn't even know where that half a million dollars could come from. It could even go to save a life. The last on this is that a study done by the Journal of Social Economics, where they created a theoretical cost and benefit analysis of physician-assisted suicide and found that when certain guidelines are met, which I will discuss later, this can actually be optimal and have great benefits for society. My next claim, why physician-assisted suicide should be legalized throughout the United States, is that it not only protects doctors, but also allows for a greater doctor-patient relationship. 
and at times it seems like this may be one of the best medical options available. As I'll get to the guidelines later, the laws in Oregon state that a doctor is distinctly protected from any sort of liability when they go through with this with their patient, and they also are not forced to do it. They can instead refer their patient to another physician. Also, the Journal of Medical Ethics has stated that it helps get rid of some of the stigma if we legalize it, as they have talked to doctors in Oregon, and the doctors has ex have explained that they've had many helpful conversations with their patients, and this leads to a more open relationship, and in the end, a closer relationship if we get rid of this stigma. Along with this, physician-assisted suicide is not a small idea that some of us may think about. The University of Washington Medical School, School has found in a survey of hundreds of physicians across the country that one out of every ten had received an explicit request for physician-assisted suicide. So this is not something we can just sweep under the rug. And for those who may say that this wouldn't be one of the best options, there are other options available for these people, and these people may also say that suicide would also be an alternative. Why need to get an okay from your doctor? However, suicide is generally frowned upon and leaves a feeling with the rest of the family that they were not at peace, which is distinctly different than if they went through physician-assisted suicide. And many, but not all, of these patients are elderly and would really have no, no means to go through with this. Along with this, people discuss palliative medicine, which is medicine used to de decrease the intense pain that these patients are going through. However, the Mayo Clinic proceedings has found results that say that palliative medicine may decrease social awareness so much that this person may be just a shell of their formal set, former selves and may in the end have negative and even deadly side effects such as respiratory depression. This really doesn't go far enough for people who view life as really worth living. My final reason why physician-assisted suicide should be legalized has to do with the critics who argue that this could lead to euthanasia or even non-voluntary euthanasia, which is when a doctor administers a lethal dose medication to a patient when they may not be fully aware or fully conscious. And they also say that this may lead to victimization in hospitals as they take advantage of the poor or the uninsured. However, as I briefly alluded to earlier, the guidelines in Oregon distinctly state many strict steps that a patient must follow, including that they must have a terminal illness that's incurable with six months less to live, they must be in constant, intense suffering, but must also be fully aware and fully conscious of the decision they're making. Along with this, other options must be presented to them by their doctor and they must undergo psychiatric consulting to see if they have depression and just suicidal tendencies. Along with this, this must all be reported, written down, and verified by an independent second doctor. Following off this, the journalist Humanist has found that there's really no rush to Oregon to embrace physician-assisted suicide. And they found in a study of patients that many of them have health insurance, are in hospice care, and almost all of them have some sort of college education. They found no negative consequences or any evidence of any of that, and it seems an assumption to say that after all this review has been done on these patients the past 15 years in Oregon. Following off this, the Journal of Medical Ethics has distinctly studied and tried to find out if there was any victimization of the poor or minorities when dealing with physician-assisted suicide in Oregon. And they found that there was no abuse of the poor, the uninsured, the lower educated, or any type of minorities, and it seems fair for all. We should legalize physician-assisted suicide in this country and give control back to those who have lost it with their terminal illness. There is no evidence that there would be exploitation, victimization, or further legislation towards euthanasia, and we could easily improve the relationship between doctor and patient and make it more open. In the end, we could also have huge economic benefits, as the people who are willing to embrace death save their money to go save more lives. And think, this could happen to any one of us. Many elderly people go through with this, but it all can also happen to young people. We can eliminate some of the grief associated with this, and by giving the opportunity to those who so choose, they can fully embrace their peaceful end as they once embraced life. Thank you.